Welcome back to Automation of the Week. My name is Brian Hayes, and every Tuesday I'll show you step-by-step -step how to build out an automation in Salesforce or Pardot. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the table component in ScreenFlow, and the use case for this is gonna be wanting to see all of the child contacts underneath an account. So as I'm sure you know, with an account, you can have parent accounts. So here in this org, I have Jake's Woodshop, which is the parent account. And then we have a child account for Blouse Barn and a child account for the Burlington Textiles Corporation. Now within those child accounts are contacts, but there's no easy way for us to see on our parent account here on Jake's Woodshop, there's no easy way for us to see the contacts of those child accounts. Sometimes you're going to have a pretty advanced account hierarchy. This happens more often when you're selling to large companies or the government where you have many different departments and it's just, it's too much to put underneath one account. So you end up having, you know, child accounts and creating that hierarchy. But still, it can be helpful to see at the ultimate parent account, some of those contacts from those child accounts. You might want to filter it to just the executives of the child accounts, or maybe just contacts who are marked as active customers or something like that. But what I'll show you now is how to use a screen flow with a table component to display those contacts on the account. And then you can always filter them as you see fit. To start, go ahead and create a new flow. This will be a screen flow. And the first thing I like to do with a screen flow that I'm gonna embed on a record is to create a new resource by coming over to this toolbox on the left. And let's create a new variable. This variable is gonna store our record ID. So we'll pass this record ID into the flow when we embed it on the Lightning Record page, which I'll show you a little bit later. We absolutely wanna make this available for input. This way we know what record we're on. So the screen flow knows what accounts to get and also what contacts related to those accounts it should get. We've got our record ID, it's marked available for input. Now let's go ahead and create a get record. The first thing we wanna get are all of the child accounts and then we'll be able to get all of the contacts that are related to those accounts. So I'm just gonna call this get child accounts. The object that we want is the account object and we only want the accounts whose parent ID is equal to our record ID, that variable we just created, because that's the ID of the account that we're on. We wanna get more than one record here, so select all records. And then in this case, we don't wanna store all the fields for these accounts. We don't really need any account fields. What we wanna to get to is a list of the contacts. So instead, click Choose Fields and let Salesforce do the rest. Then click Done. So what this creates for us is a collection variable with a different record variable for each account that we were able to get from this get step. The problem is we don't need the accounts, we need the contacts. And so what we wanna create next is a get contact step that's going to get us contacts whose account ID is contained in the accounts that we've already gotten. So if that contacts account ID exists in the collection of account IDs that we just created from our get step, we'll then give us that contact and then we'll end up listing those out. The problem is the what we get with this first get step is a record collection. And we can't use that operator on a record collection. What we actually need to do is turn it into just a regular text variable collection. Essentially just a bunch of strings that are separated by semicolons. In order for us to do that, we gotta create a little loop here uh, just to get those IDs and essentially add them in place. And then we'll have this variable that we can use at our next get step to get those contacts. Let's create the variable first. Click new resource. This will be a variable. API name can be account IDs. And the data type should be text. We want to allow multiple values for this variable and then click done. Now what we can do is let's create our loop. Select loop. We'll call this loop through accounts. Our collection variable will be our accounts from the get child accounts. You can see the difference here in the icons. One is a little image of a record and the other one has a little image of just you know, the letter A. So the record icon, that's our record collection versus just a simple text collection. So right now our text collection is blank. So let's select our record collection and we'll loop through that. And all we need to do here is add an assignment step, which takes our ID from a record collection and adds it to our text collection. We're just pushing the data from a more complicated variable to a simpler variable. Let's call this add ID to text collection. Our variable here will be our account IDs variable that we created. And make sure you change the operator from equals to add. 
Then under value, you can select the current item from loop. So what our loop is doing is it's taking our collection of accounts and it is going through them one at a time. And so for the current item that's in our loop, we can come in here and we can take that ID. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that ID, we're gonna add it to our text variable. Then click done. It'll loop through as many times as accounts that the first step found and just gonna add each ID there. This loop here is now giving us our simplified text variable with the IDs of each of the accounts that we found. We can now go outside of the loop here, hit the plus sign, and let's add another get step. We can now get those contacts. Click get record, get contacts. The object is of course gonna be the contact object. And we want all the contacts whose account ID is not equals, but is in. And now we can add our text collection variable here in our list of account IDs. So if your account ID is in our list of account IDs here, we want you to show up. Come down and select all records. And for this one, I will leave it uh, as automatically storing all of the fields, because I don't know what fields we're gonna want to display on the table just yet. Then click done. Hit the plus sign after that get step, and let's add a screen. I'm gonna call this child account contacts. And then on the left-hand side, you can search for table, and you'll see that data table shows up. Drag that onto your component here and we can get, give this a name. So this will be our contacts table. You can give it a label as well, Let's call it contacts. The next thing it's asking us for is the data source. So we need to populate this table with a collection of records. And the one that we want is our contacts from our get contact step. That's that last get step we just did. Select that. Now you can configure rows. You can select your row selection mode. So you can select multiple contacts here. You could just select one or you just make it view only. In my case, I just wanna be able to see those contacts. So I'm gonna leave this as view only. But there's plenty of great use cases where you wanna show a table of data and then let your user select one or multiple to take some action on them. Next step is to configure columns. And here you can choose the field source for the column. So I definitely want the name of the contact. So we'll add first name, click done. And then you can add another column. Let's add last name, hit done again. And now we can add another column, we'll do title. And because there's multiple child accounts here, I'm gonna add another column for company, or account in this case. So I'll choose account ID, and then we'll see how that looks. Because I'm just using this table to display data, I really don't have anything for the user to interact with, I'm gonna get rid of the footer here. We don't need to progress to different pages. There aren't different screens. There's no other actions to take. So if you click on the footer, you can then go to configure footer and just uncheck the box to show it. You can do the same thing with the header if you don't wanna see the label up there. I'm gonna leave it for now and I'll click done, hit save, call this account dash list of child account contacts. Now let's debug it. In order to debug it, I'm going to need the account ID of an account for me to test this on. So I've come back to Jake's Woodshop here. I'm just gonna copy that account ID from the URL. And now when I come to debug, here's that record ID variable that's available for input. I can just paste that ID in here, click run, and our flow runs. We can see all the steps on the right-hand side, and we can see what the outcome is right here on the left-hand side. This looks pretty good. I'm seeing four different contacts here. Their titles are coming through. But if you look at the account ID column here, it's showing the literal account ID. I actually wanna see the name of the account. This doesn't mean a lot to my users. I want the company name. This is actually a limitation of the table component right now. We can't navigate through a lookup to pull other details in. So the workaround for this is to create a formula field on that object, and then we'll just add that formula field into the table. Let me show you how to put that workaround in place. So to create that formula field, go to the contact object, because that's what we're showing in the table, then create a new field, which will be a formula, set the data type to text, I'll call this account name. I'm gonna put in parentheses table next to it, just so I know that this field was created for it to be used in a table. You probably wanna add a little more explanation and description or the help text. So if you have other admins that are looking at this field, they have some understanding of why it exists. Otherwise, I'm sure they'll just find it repetitive, duplicative, and they'll just delete it. So now we can insert a field and we're gonna navigate from the contact to the account, and then we'll bring back the account name. That's it. Then hit next. Access to that field is fine, but I'm gonna hide it from the page layouts. We don't need another field that has the account name on it. 
I'm gonna click refresh on the flow. Uh, you have to hit refresh in order for it to check to see if there's any new fields. And now we can come down to our screen component, come to our table component, go down to configure columns, and instead of account ID, I'm gonna switch this out for account name. And there it is, account name table. I'm also gonna check the box here for a custom column label because I don't need the table in parentheses to show up actually in the table. I'll just call this account name. Or actually we can just call this account. Then hit done, hit done again, save, and let's debug it again. That looks a lot better. You can see we have the Burlington Textiles Corporation and we have Blouse Barn represented here. Much easier to see than those account IDs. One thing though that I would like to have here that we don't are the contacts at the current account. We're just seeing the child account contacts. But if I want a full list of all of the contacts related to this company, I probably also want to look at the contacts on Jake's Woodshop on the current account. The reason why they don't show up here is because we didn't have the account ID for Jake's Woodshop included in our collection. We can fix that pretty quickly though. Just outside of our loop, we can add an additional assignment step that's a lot like this one, that's going to add in that ID from our original account so that any contacts included in that account are included in our table as well. Hit the plus button, choose assignment. We'll say add original account ID. We can come back to our account IDs collection variable. Again, operator definitely wants to be add, not equals. And in the value spot, we can scroll down to that record ID variable that we created at the very beginning because that's gonna contain the ID of the record we're on. Select that, click done, hit save, and now I'm gonna click activate. And I'll show you how to add this to a lightning record page. If we come to Jake's Woodshop, click the gear in the upper right hand corner and click edit page. For this informational flow, I'm gonna create a tab so that it's hidden most of the time, but it's there in case people need to see it. I'm gonna add a tab by selecting the tabs first, then clicking the add a tab button. And then you can go ahead and scroll up to the top where it says custom to add a custom label. I'll call this contacts, including child accounts. Click done. Now select that tab and on the left hand side, drag over the flow. On the right hand side, you can choose which flow you'd like and then make sure that you check the box to pass the record ID into this flow. Click save and select your tab to start up that flow and have that run. Here we can see we've got contacts now from all three accounts, the account we're on, as well as two of the child accounts. I hope you found this video helpful. If you wanna learn more about Flow, consider joining us for one of our live classes. You can learn more about that in the description below. Thanks for watching.